welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be talking about my three closest calls in the wild to dangerous animals that i have encountered now these things are not something that i would recommend like you go try to do like brave wilderness and getting stung by animals but i have had some close calls in the wild so let's get into it okay close call number one this one isn't an animal but it could still this one will itch let me just say that um i was trying to capture a snake because i wanted to catch it because i like snakes <laughs> um uh and then i didn't realize that i had touched poison ivy and poison ivy i wouldn't okay i guess i wouldn't consider poison ivy a close call but it sure as heck wasn't fun because let me tell you i panicked because i didn't know what to do because i've never had poison ivy before that day but as soon as i touched poison ivy i washed my I washed my hands, and in the middle of herping, like out in the middle of a field somewhere, I had to come all the way back, take a shower, put on different pair of clothes, because I really didn't want poison ivy. I've seen people uh, close to me, like family relatives who've had it before, and it does not look fun to have. So, guess what? I didn't want it. And I did pretty much everything to avoid it, and by the end of the day, I did not have poison ivy, which was amazing. So I guess I did kind of avoid that. And by the way, all of these ones I did avoid. And if I had got bit or stung by any of them, you guys would have seen a video. But unfortunately, every video that I've been stung of, I've been stung by snakes or anything like that, none of them are available because they've never happened. So, which is great. I've been stung by wasps off camera uh, catching snakes, but that's not even a close call because a wasp sting is not that bad. You could survive a wasp sting unless you go into anaphylaxis, which in the end could kill you. But I don't go to, into anaphylaxis, which is uh, good. Number two. Uh, yeah, this is funny because I was just talking about wasp stings. I'm sorry I bumped the camera on uh, the B-roll camera. I'm sorry. I did not mean to bump the camera, but I did. Um, it's about a wasp sting. The first one that I had was actually in this room a little bit outside the door because there's a door off camera. You could kind of see it on the B-roll camera right now. That's a door back there with the yellow cord. Anyway, uh, out there, there was mud, and I forgot that wasps like to dig, uh, like make their mounds around mud. And this one had done that exact thing. They It made its home there. And unfortunately, when I was doing that, looking around for snakes in the grass, as I do while looking, I felt something very painful hit my leg. Can you guess what it was? It was a wasp. So, I came back inside. I treated my leg and everything. I just put ice on it. And I didn't get to go herping for the rest of the day. Even though it was a really nice day. And I'm guaranteed I missed finding a couple good great finds while I was out there. But, hey, I'd rather take care of it than not take care of it and it get worse in the end. Number three and the scariest one of all is I almost got bit by a cotton mouth pretty terrifying um not that i'm scared of snakes i'm not i used to be but if you want to know my whole story you could check out this video right here it's on my channel i didn't get bit thank god but i was walking picture this i'm gonna put an animation up on the screen i'm gonna do some animating stuff right here this is new i've never done this but imagine you're walking next to a ditch and in that ditch prior to that prior to when i was visiting there it had rained and prior to it raining, cotton mouths and snakes could actually sense when the weather changes. And I'm pretty sure you guys didn't know that. But animals can actually sense weather changes before, they even, the, before the bad weather is even here. They're pretty remarkable. But I, was, I went to my, uh, a relative's house to go look for snakes over there. Because I've had some good success back there. And I have found some cotton mouths before. I know they're in the area, but I didn't expect one to be... 10 inches away from my foot very close to stepping on the snake because i did not see it but what i did is or more what the snake did i guess is i walked i was walking up against the ditch since it had rain like i said there was a, the ditch filled up with water so snakes will like to lie in the water i found water snakes lying in that ditch before in the water and i have attempted to catch them but let's not talk about that because i didn't succeed in any of those attempts but none of the snakes have catched but one of the ones that I did not get bit by, thankfully, was the cottonmouth. 
and it was up on it was like ha it's half of the body was in the water and half of it was out of the water and i didn't even see it and it was doing the classic cotton mouth gape where it's gaping its cotton mouth hence its name and i didn't even see it until i was like this close to stepping on it and uh the reason the cotton mouth was out was a very interesting reason it's because and this is the first time i had ever encountered an, an amphiuma now if you guys don't know what that is, it's kind of like a salamander, but it's a lot bigger than a tiny new or axolotl. And yes, axolotls are related to salamanders. If you don't know that, that's kind of sad if you're in the reptiles and amphibians. But they are aquatic mainly. So whenever I had found out that there was a amphiuma nearby, I had my glove and my snake hook because I was actively herping and I wanted to catch it. So I tried to catch it and I was like, hey, there's a cotton moth right over there. And there's an amphiuma in my hand. Which, by the way, they're very slimy. And they're very hard to hold on. I got like three seconds of holding on to that amphiuma. In realization the whole time that that's what the cotton moth was actively hunting. If you search out what a cotton moth's main diet is, it is actually amphiumas, frogs, toads, fish, decaying matter. Like animals and stuff. They're actually scavenged, which is quite interesting. And, uh, yeah. So... Those are the times I've almost gotten bit, uh, itched on, I guess, by poison ivy, and stung. I did get stung by the wasp, but that is not a lie. I have actually been stung multiple times. And I will add another one on to you guys, uh, just because it's not really a close call, but it's kind of a fun story. And storytelling, I know people like getting told stories. Anyway, this time, I had caught a rat snake. And where I live, rat snakes aren't that common. I've only found three ever in my area and i've lived here for seven years that just shows you i'm either looking in the wrong place or they're just not around here in high population like the urban snakes and water snakes are because i found plenty of those but anyway i was under a grid i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i'm just gonna loop that i'm sorry 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 no but i keep hitting the camera i'll move my foot i'm gonna readjust my sitting position Anyway, yes, don't mind my short. It says Fortnite. Um, I don't really wear this shirt often. It's a work shirt. My point is that when I had had the rat snake in my hand, me and my brother were going to get some photos and video of it, you know, to put up on the YouTube for you guys to see. But that did not last very long because I let the snake go for a second, and it may or may not have gone underneath a grill outside. And underneath the grill, it was kind of like, it had like an overhang. You know how grills are mainly like that. I'll put an image of a grill on top and I'll put an aerial of where the wasps were. But they were under there. And I got stung on the hand, like right here. And it was on a vein too, I'm pretty sure. And that hurt a lot. So just, if you guys are herping, I'm pretty sure you are if you're watching this, you're interested in the craft. Be careful, because there are obviously four times, and I've only been... There have been more times that I won't even include, because the video is almost freaking ten minutes long already, just me rambling about close calls. But the point of this video is to just be careful, and if you're out there, always have equipment with you, because you never know what could go wrong. I'm not saying that I want you to get bit by a venomous snake, or stung, or get poison ivy, or get stung again. But, I'm just saying that if you do, it'd be useful to have a tool with you to do that. And if there was a sponsor of this video, that's where that would come in. But, there's not. Uh, if there's anyone who wants to sponsor me, go ahead. I only have 305 people who watch me. But, that's still 305 people who can make a difference. Um, like I said, just be careful. And, that's mainly my main message of this video. Is be careful and learn about how to identify these snakes and if you want to learn about how to identify uh a cotton mouth click on this video right here and i'll see you guys in my next video